Hi, this is John Reed, live from SAP Controlling. Actually, technically, this is called Controlling 2019, but it's really for SAP folks. Uh, I'm joined by Kent Bettesworth, who certainly fits that description. Thank you, John. Glad to be here. Yeah, you've been pretty much coming and speaking here about every year. Every year since. So uh, tell tell listeners kind of what you do in the market. So uh, for a long time, I was uh, a fixed asset project systems expert. That was based on my 14 years at Exxon and the last few years putting in SAP and then working independently, 40-plus companies doing the same thing. And it transitioned into a focus on revenue recognition, uh, lease accounting, uh, and the like. And we're definitely going to talk about revenue recognition because there's been some interesting presentations on that topic here, and that's an issue that a lot of companies, in, in especially with those making transitions to subscription business, really looking hard at. So we're going to get into that a little bit. But first, I want to talk about RPA because you're one of the first people to ever present at this conference, maybe the first, on robotic process automation. Um, and you, you had a full crowd because that... I was thinking, okay, you're presenting on auditing and RPA. How many people are going to show up? Yeah, that, I thought the same thing. Yeah. Uh, but it was an interesting combination to try. Yeah, and we got a big turnout for that. We did. So, so, and, and, you, and one of the things you did as part of this is you had a lot of close conversation with SAP because your slide deck included a lot of SAP's um, architecture is what I call it. But it's useful stuff yes. around like how SAP frames RPA within the context of the stuff they do with Leonardo and just how they define it all. So tell us about this journey that you went on. Like what inspired you to dig into this in the first place? So I, like a lot of folks, I've seen the word Leonardo and I've been confused. Is that an actual thing, a product or just a marketing term? And, and it is just a marketing umbrella term that SAP is using to describe their overall intelligent enterprise. And um, so while my brain was thinking about those kinds of things over the last uh, year or so, um, I also came across, and primarily from my daughter because she's in in auditing, about the PCOB and uh, what their role was relative to technology. So I thought, you know, I actually have never heard anybody make that connection between what the audit standard setting board, the PCAOB, yep. was saying relative to the technologies, artificial intelligence, machine learning, et cetera, are coming. So I thought that would make a great presentation. Yeah, and a couple of your key points here. One is that SAP is rapidly incorporating robotic process automation basically throughout its software and processes, so that's, that's one piece of it. Um, but then I thought you have a really provocative question, which is, should your audit committee care about the quickening pace of technology change? And what's your answer to that? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Yep. Uh, because you, from an audit perspective and an audit committee, you know a couple things. One, you know that you don't know everything, and you know that you're one step behind the next bad event from, a, uh, from an audit issue, such as a hack or a cyber issue. Yeah, and, and one interesting thing in our world is we cover a Diginomic, we cover a lot of emerging companies and SaaS companies, and I always like bringing up auditing because everyone thinks like auditing, what a dry topic, but actually things like auditing and compliance and security are at the core of a lot of things that prevent business transformation from happening because if you can't check those boxes, then forget about your next-gen project. That is exactly right. Yeah. In fact, the audit committee ought to be viewed more as an enabler right. and a and that's your risk mitigation backstop. And mm-hmm. you should be utilizing them. They should be putting themselves in that position. Yeah, and the, the PCAOB, for those who don't know, is... That uh, generated out of the 2002 yeah. SOC, so I'm dating myself a little bit, uh, yeah. but they were uh, the end result of the things that happened that year and the year before was uh, we need to audit the audit firms and they need to have their own standards. And so the PCOB took on a more enhanced role to audit the audit firms and set standards. Right. And and you said that in May 2019 of this year was a sort of a, a significant moment because they issued some new guidance. Correct. So uh, they... A couple things happened. Uh, one, they released the results of auditing 2018 audits, uh, not just in the U.S., but from around the world. And the 
results that came out of there uh, touched on a number of, of key items. Uh, one that audit firms are starting to look at artificial intelligence and robotic process automation to do a better audit job, but also that companies were not paying enough attention to the cybersecurity risk. Mm. And so both audit firms and audit companies, and specifically the audit committees, need to pay a lot more attention to the cybersecurity than they are today. And this is where I made the connection with Leonardo and uh, the like, is that you're going to put in place robots, quote robots, to Mm. automate a lot of activities. Let's say if 80% of your ERP system is core business processes that everybody does the, the should be done the exact same way, you're going to automate that. The PCAOB saw in the audit results the opportunity for a lot of significant mm. mistakes if you're not paying attention to what you're automating and how the robot is, is doing that. Mm. Right. So, for example... Uh, if you have a, a robot that is performing a task and you um, are doing some coding around developing that robot, a couple things. One, somebody at the end of the day has to be able to explain how it works. Right. And it has to make, you have to be able to say that you tested it adequately all the way through the development, mm. the quality testing deployment phase, and that there's no co- coding errors in there. And I mean, and that's not an overstatement at all. That it's now going to be a robot. So if there's a bad error in that, mm-hmm. that gets a bad result. You got you. You have to be a hundred percent. Yeah. And the second part of that was um, if there's uh, some algorithms in there, you have to make certain that those algorithms are free of bias right. towards one kind of outcome or the other. Yeah. Right. So. So this technology and this idea that we were going to have robots, it just dawned on me that, oh, geez, you have employees and companies that are going to sit down with young auditors and talk about their processes, and the auditor is going to say, well, tell me how this uh, robot process works for clearing out your uh, payables account. And mm-hmm. the young employee is going to say, I don't know, it's a robot. So right. there's a huge risk there that right. audit committees need to be paying attention to attention to and be ahead of the curve on educating and evaluating exactly what's coming into the company. That's the technology piece, robotics. Mm. And then the other piece we'll talk about in a second here is the cybersecurity piece. Yeah. Yeah, that it's interesting because I it it seems like this space is sort of for auditors and for finance people in general it's both an opportunity and a threat all wrapped up in one in that sense, right? Yes. You you can Machines can do some things that humans can't do to identify anomalies and problems and potential exposures that that you would want to correct before you were audited. But on the other hand, you could also screw up your audit. Exactly. So You could, just as easily as it might find uh, the exceptions for you to fix, it could actually be creating problems that you never see. You're not going to get a marketing job with an RPA <laughs> vendor if you talk like that, Ken. Come on, man. I know, you're, you're exactly <laughs> we gotta, right. we got to fan the flames of this thing a little bit better than that. Uh, and, 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 and on the cybersecurity front, um, just touching on that since you brought it up, I think what's interesting there is we talk about everyone. Sometimes I'll see these articles that will be like, oh, you know, you can automate all this stuff and, and how it's going to make a difference in your cybersecurity. And then I keep saying, well, but – the so-called bad guys, if we can call them that, yeah. are, are using the same tools and they're after you. So it's almost like you got you need it just to defend yourself at this point. So Exactly right. And, and you just have to always say to yourself, you're one step behind them. They're yeah. ahead of you. So how do you mitigate that exercise? And uh, the PCAOB, uh, one of their board members, Kathleen Hamm, spoke about this separately from the inspection report that came out about 20 for the 2018 results. And she said, clearly, cyber threats are the number one threat, not just to companies, and we see headlines every day, but it's a, it's a fundamental threat to our the basis of our capitalist system. If, sure. if investors cannot trust the numbers that they're seeing, then the stock prices are going to reflect that mistrust 
so it, it really is a very serious issue that I think folks are taking serious, but they've got to elevate that to, to the next level. Uh, to really be ahead of the curve and, and there's certainly a lot of headlines about those, those security risk. Uh, but you see them every day with the data breaches, uh, of Yahoo and Equifax yeah. and, and so forth. So, uh, that's, that struck me in the, in the, uh, presentation that Kathleen Hand did and, uh, from the PCAOB material that's out there. And Kathleen, just to reinforce this, Kathleen Hamm was referencing what a lot of our national security uh, agencies are saying, that this is the number one threat yep. to our uh, capitalist system. <coughs> It'd be fun to edit that out. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and I think also, and I don't want to make light of that because I, I completely agree with that, but on a slightly less urgent but also very serious level i would argue it's 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 a very big threat to the both the erp projects that folks care about here but also any of these future next gen automation projects the reason being that if you don't trust the data and the numbers then you're not going ahead with anything yes know? and so if i'm an erp vendor like sap and i'm pushing leonardo i must be prepared to answer those questions yeah and likewise the companies that are doing the evaluations their audit committees should be talking to the evaluation evaluators saying hey what are you how hard are you pushing back on cyber risk and cyber issues mm. how much are you pushing back on what these rpa processes are and how will how will we audit them right and we could have a whole longer discussion on this but then you bring in projects that have a machine learning component and there's a notorious black box element to how machines learn and how they come up with the recommendations and automations that they come up with. And so that's another issue for auditors because auditors and black boxes are really not compatible. It, so. it, I think fundamentally you're right about yeah. that. But we, and, and I at one level understand the machine learning, but at another level I'm like, how am I going to explain it to an auditor? Mm. And, and that's a significant gap that mm. has to be addressed. Uh, and, and I think it's, it is a potential significant obstacle to adoption of new technology. You had an interesting, uh, observation. I think you had an anecdote that illustrated that point, but one of the classics is the whole, like, what happens if you eventually get into a smart vehicle that's automated and it has to choose between, I don't want to get too gory here, but let's just say running over a cat versus running over a dog. You know, and, and someone from an insurance risk and compliance standpoint has to come back then and justify that as well. Yes. You know. Yes. And that's, uh, that, that's, that's exactly right. Uh, so, uh, we know that the automation is the future. We know that we need to automate those tasks that, mm -hmm. uh, where humans could actually be deployed on things that have much, that are of much more value. Mm. But we can't just plunge head first into it. Uh, and, right. and, and here, so I have one other antidote just to, to go back to something that, that struck me was on our space shuttles, right? So highly complex, significant amounts of automation. Uh, they worked fabulously well, but there were obviously two significant failures in that space shuttle and we didn't catch those, right? Yeah. And we needed to catch those. It right. needed to be 100% uh, uh, fail proof, and it, and it wasn't. Yeah. So we're not, in the case of software, we're obviously not necessarily talking about yeah. anything to that significant of a loss of life type of level. But if you lose your data, uh, your company has lost its life. Yeah. So just one more thing just to kind of frame this since you – You've been looking into this so carefully. In terms of workflow automation, I remember talking about SAP automating workflows in SAP in the 90s. Mm -hmm. So yep. is this one of those things of a new coat of paint, or as you kick tires on it, did you see possibilities that weren't there in the past from a technology standpoint? So my eyes see things, and I hear things about uh, if – with machine learning, for example, I can start matching my, uh, 
items in my clearing account, and it starts off at a 50% accuracy, and then it learns what to look for, and then I get up to 95%. And I go, man, that's really cool. That's awesome. And then I think, well, so tell me, tell me exactly how it's doing that. You know, tell me one, two, three, four, five. And I don't know what one, two, three, four, five is. I need to know what one, two, three, four, five is. Mm -hmm. So I can articulate that and explain it to an auditor. And, or, the auditor knows it, and I think this is what the PCAOB is trying to push audit firms, is that not only should they be using this technology to do a better audit job, but their auditors need to understand the technology so that they can be the one asking the question of their companies and in anticipation of getting the right answer back that they know. So in other words, it's kind of a symbiotic relationship around this whole, what are you doing to manage cyber risk? What are you doing to improve your company with robotic automation? And do you really understand what that automation is accomplishing its end? Right. And one of the most interesting slides that I think you, uh, shall we say, borrowed from SAP, um, illustrates their their it, what they call intelligent end-to-end -end automation view. And I thought it was interesting because they kind of classified three different areas. They classified interaction around conversational UIs, chatbots, which essentially then hand over to what they call execution bots or so-called intelligent RPA. Sorry for all the lingo here, but basically multiple bots, workflows for execution, both attended and unattended, which is big because that implies the role of the human and the design, you have to figure that out. That's for performing tasks. And then there, they have another third category, what they're calling optimize, machine learning driven, self-learning bots with so-called dynamic adaptability, whatever that means. But basically learn from exceptions is sort of one of the things there, um, right. spot anomalies. So does that kind of make sense is kind of where this is, how to think about this? Is I, I think from a... Uh, 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 presentation perspective to start it starts to make some sense around where the industry is going and where SEP specifically is going I mean everybody's doing bots but this I understand this between conversational execution and machine learning uh, and so I think that makes a lot of sense but I keep coming back to a couple things one I'm I don't really know what machine learning is, and I think I used this in my presentation. Right. I talked about can you put stuff in a petri dish and it it grows a brain and it learns and you know it's a living thing. Is machine learning a living thing or is it still what I go back to my old COBOL pro? Is it still code uh, or is it something else? And then from a conversational, I, I'm sorry, but uh, whenever I call into customer service at a company these days, as you all know, you get a uh, you get a bot, a conversational bot. Yeah, yeah. And the day that that bot gets me to the right person the first time will That's be the day that day, I think yeah. we're there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we're, we're nowhere near that now based on my call center experiences of late. <laughs> exactly. And, and in terms of use cases, I thought it was interesting you shared the PCAOB. Um, they observed audit firms actively considering these technologies and they were looking at uses one was risk assessment, which does make sense. You, you see that already in terms of like credit card fraud and things like that, for example. Um, uh, typically involve analysis of large volumes of transactions, so revenue, journal entry testing seems yeah, to be so interesting. Exactly. So if you think about revenue, obviously the number one target of, of uh, every audit firm uh, is to make certain that for your investors that are looking at companies that they can trust that revenue number. So in the past, they might only audit um, exceptions or transactions posted at the end of the year. Uh, now they have the opportunity to look at the entire population and use a bot to pull out, to find the anomalies, look at the patterns, see what doesn't fit, and pull it out. Or look at the patterns and look at what looks like it fits, but find that one little piece of data that says, nope, somebody made that fit. That's not right. Pull it out. Yep. That's, to me, that's when when we get to that point, now you're really talking about value add of a, of a bot. Now you're getting to the core of building the foundation of trust on 
our capitalist system and on the financial information that we depend so heavily, which is exactly why the auditors exist in the first place. Yeah, and then the other thing is that they uh, PCAOB also saw that it was this technology potentially used for identifying outliers that could warrant audit attention, which also makes a lot of sense, which is sort of what you were describing there. Yep. And the the one thing that I always think about is we're probably a long way from asking machines to go ahead and like fill out forms, for example, like saying, okay, we found this, you know, violation and we found this issue. But one thing I also want to see that I think machines can do is, is put out some recommended actions for the human to consider. Um, so basically it's, it's, it, the next step becomes a little more prescriptive where they, the machine might say in 70, in 70% of the cases, this was the likely action to be taken. In 20%, this was, exactly. and gave you kind of a series of choices that might not be comprehensive, but at least they would start to guide the thinking of, and I could see that especially being useful for more junior level individuals to at least start getting a handle on it, but they might not be authorized to make that decision, but they could at least see, okay, here's, I should go flag my boss about this, or blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That's exactly right, and, and let me take uh, a point off on that, which is, uh, so we move from freeing up people who are doing data entry by using bots to capture data and and free them up to do analysis. And I used to call that, uh, you know, let's reduce the time to analysis. But this level of bots that we're talking about is reducing the time to action. Right. And and I think that's key. Right. right? Yep, that makes sense. All right, so just wrapping up the RPA part of our talk, uh, Putting SAP's technology roadmap aside, if you were advising an ERP customer who wanted to learn more about RPA from an auditing perspective in that area, what would be your advice in terms of some next steps? So I think the next steps would be uh, to engage with your uh, audit committee and make sure they're engaged with the, uh, with the executives. Formulate a strategic plan of what areas you're going to focus on, whether it's uh, around the cyber risk in particular, around the concerns around, around what's inside that black uh, box automation, and then be actively involved in the software evaluations. I think an audit, an internal auditor mm. or even a representative from the audit committee should be sitting in on these conversations so that they're close to it. They should also be engaging with their with their auditors uh, to in, to ensure that they're uh, at least one step uh, behind the, the 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 bad event and not five or six or seven steps behind the bad event. And if they can get ahead of it, that's even that's even better. Thanks, Ken. Well, we're not going to solve RPA in one one podcast, but we gave it a swing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think what I'm going to do now is I'll just do a quick pause because we want to talk about revenue recognition, but I might want to issue this as a short, separate discussion. So, quick pause. <laughs> 